Both these teams will be attending TI. And VP, I think, maybe with a, a bit more to prove, you know? Be curious to see if VP adjust or adapt. Yeah, and I'm also interested to see how uh, Zhao Aid's going to be doing mid against uh, GPK. Just because, you know, it's GPK Lena. Okay. That's uh, not quite supposed to happen, but I guess it did start with a tri lane. So, not really pick up on Faith Beyond, and they're going to do a bunch of damage on Y as he attempts to pull the creep wave behind the tower. Look at this nice body blocking by Kingslayer. He's just not letting him go. Oh, that was beautiful. Finally, he gets free, but the damage is already done. Actually, in fact, enough damage, they can actually get a second kill out of this lane. Now he's going to be able to get some CS. And Medusa, at some point, just going to rotate jungle, take stacks. Has a huge level advantage up top. They'll start smacking him, but unlikely to do too much damage. Yeah, they managed to burn him out. Most of his mana here... But there is going to be the Winter Wyvern coming in. He's got the Cold Embrace, but at the same time, Faith Beyond, he's got enough to be able to drop another round of Nether Toxin. Why is going to die first? Faith Beyond is going to be able to get the kill, but he'll have a exit right after. And I feel like that is just naturally Zhao Wei's inclination in the first place, right? Like former offlaner anyway. Yep. Like he wants to just kind of like run around, make moves. And so far, it hasn't been too great as they might be able to get this Winter Wyvern kill in the top lane and prevent him from getting some extra experience. It's going to take a bit, though. As yeah. bottom lane, DM is going to run headlong into Faith Beyond, and that is a much more important kill. Oh. As, uh, ooh, barely managed to get off the Ravage. They're going to turn around and blow up Faith Beyond real quick. It's going to cost the Tidehunter his life, but so far, the trade-off is worth it. Save's going to be chased down by Wise. He cleaned up that Winter Wyvern and is now here to play. Last time Winter Wyvern was really big in the meta, I remember Clockwork being a hero. Even though you can fly out of cogs, it was just so important to get vision of the Winter Wyvern behind the tier one tower. You know, because he would just do that sort of ratting thing and pick up free experience and free gold with Splinter Blast. So Night Stalker is just a much version, much better version of that is why he just kind of walks his way in with a crippling fear. The Winter's Curse is nice. He's laid out, but Zhao Wei's looking to be able to interfere with the Rolling Thunder. Running forward, DM is looking to be able to slow down Faith Beyond long enough for the rest of the team to join in. Zhao Wei still causing some havoc in the back line, and it looks like both him and Y may have attempted to cause too much of a distraction as Virtus Pro turns down their eye on the captains and coaches and bring them down and now to claim a tier one tower as well. Not bad. I mean, they just stood strong a little early on the deuce ulti, but does force PSG LG away. But no, th there's no real physical damage on PSG LG with the exception of the Sven. Oh, they get another talk to the time. Off, see if they can chain up the tight hunter and thanks to the break of the Viper, it's pretty easy to do so. These TPs are gonna have to be canceled, and that leaves GPK in a sticky spot. And a dark spot is ooh, the winter's curse from Kingslayer is gonna be able to bail him out. Turns around. Oh, what? Goes for the go to play. He missed the timing. Oh no. What? He was really hoping for that fast kill in a Jow but he must have been just a half second I'm off. That is that. rough. GPK revealing himself here on the side, throwing out some spells. Is don't really want to go on Ame, I imagine. Sure enough, they're going to start backing oh, away, but John Wait, oh, we caught him with the basher. Now the Rolling Thunder is going to be there. Winter's Curse does go out, and Zhao Wei gets destroyed by Ame. And that is enough of a window for DM to be able to blink away. So very nice save from Kingslayer. I want to support you. It is a good tool, because if you have the vision advantage, being able to blink in out of invis is guaranteed. It. Oh. They're going to be able to jump on a Medusa here. They're going to quickly break her. They have Zhao Wei to be able to keep a chain stun while the silence is staying on to the Winter Wyvern. Might fall very close to dying, but DM gets there just in time for the Ravage. Oh. Ame, though, beautiful time of the BKB, is able to keep up, just destroys GPK, finishes off Nightfall, and now looks to be able to chase down DM as well. Zhao Wei will provide the slow for Ame to catch up and very likely get this kill. There is nothing Virtus Pro can do about this rampaging Sven. Yeah, it's definitely a Rax in what was a pretty even game, and it could have been more perhaps, but Virtus Pro do have their outer towers in the side lane still up. Ame is chasing, though. He's not going to let this go. They're going to turn around and catch him inside of Silver Edge. Now, here comes the Night Stalker to try and slow things out. Ame, he's going to need some help, and that's going to be Jin Q. Pop of the relocate. They do have Y just going in immediately, and he is going to be caught in the flock. But Ame is back into it, though. DM does manage to get a really nice Ravage to be able to slow down. Ame, Ame, going to go for the Silver Edge away. The relocate out again doesn't actually grab the spend, but it does mean that LGD are going to have to leave their two initiating heroes behind. 
What do you make of him completing out that swift blank then, rather than trying to get that uh, that orchid build up as fast as possible? As, oh, DM! Awkward positioning here. Now there is going to be the Cole in the brace and save does manage to get the hex. Zhao Wei is going to catch save as he tries to get away, but the winner's curse oh, is going to go out there. Zhao Wei did manage to roll up though. It's going to be a lot of damage cutting it in. Zhao Wei, he's not going to be able to survive through it, but neither is save. He's immediately buys back and TPs back into this and they do have Nightfall to contend with. He's slowing down Ame with the Scotty. GPK is going to catch up eventually. All the slows in the world. GPK, Jin Q comes back in. Bean Keel is going to turn back into DM, but the Cole the brace it's too hard for them to be able to deal with sven just cannot put out any damage and slowly but surely oh come on that ravage was just a tentacle shy of being able to catch ame instead faith beyond is potentially going to get run down by nightfall not quite good enough gpk in the back lines did manage to finish up Y and is going to quickly join the rest of his team for this push onto high ground you were talking about earlier on in the game and that medusa does eventually turn into a really good hero versus sven being able to kite him finish like jow has zero impact in that team fight and later on you kill him oh the invis Oh no, oh GPK, those quick fingers of him just got him out alive. The Winter's Curse is gonna stall the BKB Sven and his BKB is now worn out. DM has looked to be able to slow him down with the gush. Zhao Wei running interference, bouncing off the wall. GPK turning around, trying to get out of this sticky situation, but the cold embrace again. And now Night falls here with the Stone Gaze with the Scotty's Ame. He needs to get out and Jin Q, he's got a ticket out of here. For the moment, the rest of LGD <laughs> gonna try and retreat where they can. Zhao Wei does manage to at least all in and kill both GPK and Kingslayer. Buyback coming out from the Winter Wyvern. And maybe this is the fight that LGD, with their reset of the relocate out, they're gonna be able to bring down Nightfall. They've got him once and they probably got him twice. Yeah, of course. Meanwhile, Wise just chasing away the supports all by himself. This is 100% dead Medusa. Might take a little while. <laughs> He's gonna actually go for t Oh my god, what? he read what? there's no stuns. I look at their lineup, they've got no stuns. I think you can, just because if Pango and Sven are both on top, you know, the disarm proc that renders Medusa somewhat useless. Well, completely useless. Oh, hang on. Nightfall's pretty far forward here. The Winter's Curse is going to be laying out, but it's going to be a short one with Zhao Wei stalling Kingslayer. They really want this Winter Wyvern dead. Miss the roll. The Cool and the Brace does go off, saving the Winter Wyvern for a small moment here, but eventually they're going to catch back up. Zhao Wei continues to stay on to Nightfall. They're also going for DM, who's broken right now, to catch up to him and bring him down. What you want to do is get a DD to spawn top, and then you run in as five. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what LGD wants to do, and they're going to be able to find that as Zhao Wei. He's going to be able to get on top of Nightfall immediately. Look at that mana just get taken out. The Winter's Curse is going to go down, but it's already too late. The Bloodthorn has already done its work. Kingslayer is going to be left behind as the rest of British Pro try and retreat, but it may be too much, Kyle. This double damage has just put a nail in the coffin, potentially. They're going to go for the Ravage, but again, the Bloodthorn, it's just the last bit of damage required to kill the cores. They have buybacks, but they do not have Nightfall. Both of these lineups are so dependent on their hard carry. PSG LGD winning three fights in a row like that may have just got an opening to close out the game. That is okay. Well, there it is. Wow. I guess they're also trying stuff out to be fair, but yeah, I, I mean, I would say yeah. so. I think that the new patch just makes it so that there's a lot of openings for, for all roles. I'm still waiting for offlane Jakiro to make an emergence, but I uh, wanted to comment. There's, <laughs> you know, VP, I'm glad they've been the Night Stalker, but I'm shocked that they once again picked Medusa, considering yesterday PSG LGD beat T1 twice in a row against the enemy Medusa, and, and they're just continuing to grab it. Oh, whoa, whoa. Ame, Whoa. <laughs> once again, LGD maybe having a rough go of things, but it hasn't stopped them several times before is uh, why beautiful body blocking. They're going to make sure to give the kill to GPK. This is looking pretty nice for VP. Like, it's a significantly larger lead in the context of the game, and there's the bots, there's the kill. Look, Toronto Tokyo is an incredible mid player. He's going to TI, but GPK was like the darling of the entire Eastern European region. Everyone in the world wanted to play with this guy. And, uh, nice two man Fisher, but it's not enough to save it. Shin Q, he does not have a roll away. Rather impressive. And he was the kid left out of the, the roster move from uh, Elephant, you know? Like, that was supposed to be the big super team. They're leaving Ame behind, and it, it's Ame has definitely had 
the last laugh so far, but he's not going to get a whole lot of giggles out of that little play. Just coming out from Virtus Pro, a well-executed gank that could not be stopped by a simple Fisher, and it turns into a second kill on Y as well. They need pickoffs. That's the problem. This could be it. Yeah. No, oh, it's not it. Really nice positioning from DM. Playing the side of the trees and putting his creeps always in front of him. That means Y is just going to be left behind on a failed gank. 5,000 net worth lead yeah. and growing. You know, I, I do have love for Earth Spirit. Okay, well, what? You just sort of run in circles. GBK going to try and pull him up the cliff. And with a flame break, he gets him up there. And that distance is crucial because now Kingslayer... Oh, unfortunately, that purge got rid of the dust right as it went out. So they're going to have to try and get the kill on Y instead. He does manage to get off the false promise. Xiao Wei shows up and tries to go for the kill on Kingslayer. There's the Fisher to help finish him off. But Xiao Wei, he's not sure where he's going. And the answer is nowhere. Straight into the dirt as, as GPK puts him there. Kingslayer going to be run down by Ame Nightfall. Out of mana as well. GPK back into the mix. Even without a Firefly, he's got save to deliver the damage that he was missing. And they are going to return fire against LGD. The roar. Oh, they're jump. Oh, okay. They could have gone for GPK, but they're like, no, no, no. He's got an Aegis. Let's kill save. He has been a master of two different team fights for Virtus Pro. Faith Beyond is going to get run down in exchange, but this is space as Zhao Aid is going to be able to clean up another creep wave on the side. Phantom Lens is trying to find some farm, but again, they're immediately moving to the other side of the map, knowing that Ami is going to try and push out and get farm, and they've caught him again. Why? This time around is around to save him, but it is going to cost him his life instead. Jin Q slowly rolling in, doesn't want to be here. Lotus Orb giving away to Ame. Everybody's going to try and save Ame here. May have his glide near now, but it's looking like it's a tad bit too late. But it seems like LGD just cannot take this. Glide near into the burning barrage. Nightfall, just enough mana to be able to get on the stone gaze, and they're going to reset now. LGD, they know they have to pursue, but they can't overly jump this as they're going to be in deep underneath the vision. The Winter's Curse goes out onto the Clinks, allowing the Medusa to be able to TP away. A nice two man stun, though, coming out from Faith Beyond. If they want this to be at all a recovering position, they're going to have to get both of these supports kills, which they will. Yeah, seriously. Two lives on the Medusa. Tier 3 about to fall. Jin Q, his initiation, does end up on the Beastmaster. At the same time, they've already caught Y. He's dead, and he does not have buyback. The supports don't have it there, and Faith Beyond is actually in a bit of trouble as well. The Tier 3 is going to fall, and PSG LGD backs against the wall are going to be forced out of this position they're going to have to get in there or unless they're planning on playing against the megas but all this poke damage to just keep on poking finally the winner's curse managed to catch faith beyond on top of that one so if they can get them both inside the stone gaze which they do they're both gonna fall they both do have buyback but it is gonna be rough as Jin Q slides right on past nightfall and just simply dies he does manage to get a kick in before he goes down they're staying right here Zhao Wei, inside of her base claiming megas psg lgd Again, poking GPK. Nice initiation catching Y again. No chance of a false promise. Xiao Wei barely able to get away thanks to his invis, but Faith Beyond caught by the Scotty. He's going to go for a Yules, try and blink himself out of here. Does manage to dodge the LSA, but is immediately hit by the Axes before he can blink away. Gets off the Echo Slam, but again, not enough damage to kill anything, and certainly not enough damage to threaten. Oh, yeah, and uh, credit to PSGLGD. They don't ever say die. They're Defending throne against Megas. Great job being able to showcase why he was able to get such a bigger advantage than Toronto Tokyo did. But this matchup is also very difficult for Pango as they managed to get a kill in bottom lane. Wasn't expecting that one. But... Certainly better than the previous game, though. And I think he is a lot more yeah. comfortable on Pango. I, I know he's won games on Clinks, but I think for his team, uh, they prefer him on this, you know, more space making playmaker. Than on uh yeah than on clinks like give, give Ame clinks I, I like this move the body block yeah it doesn't matter how many pubs you practice this clinks this faith beyond does manage to get the kill on Kingslayer farm up the hard camp why he's gonna show himself GPK pops out in range of the viper strike and that will definitely be a kill as the cogs if anything just sets up why for a faster death time is Kingslayer continues to deftly dodge in this bottom lane. 
He's got himself level six, so he's going to probably need to use it here in order to get out. Nice curse does actually catch the uh, Keeper of the Light inside of it. The only thing missing right now is that uh, PSGLG, they only have that single Ancient stack. Not quite good enough. Save, really good positioning, but a Death Pacted Clinks is really hard to burst down. Faith Beyond, a lot easier. Yeah, way easier. I love save on this Lena, man. This is a... Uh... This has been a really nice performance so far. Obviously, just kind of owned last game with some big solo kills on Ame. Looks like Y is once again going to go down. I mean, what can you do, right? You're a clockwork. You're level four. That is your job. That's, that is going to be very cute. That is going to be some powerful combo. Because last time we saw, like, the swap back with the Earthshaker being able to Fisher. Oh. Rod of Atos, it's revealed. Ame, not expecting that, is going to die to it. And then Lena pops over. Didn't even need the Laguna. And still finds the kill. Now got his level 6 after that kill. And he'll use it to show up against GPK. The Winner's Curse actually stopping the roll-in that they were looking to get the kill onto GPK. Zhao Wei is going to chase after him. But the Rolling Thunder Ooh. is going to run out. So they're going to have to go for save instead. GPK thinking about returning fire. And he can. Mars is coming. He can bait them in a little bit more. And then all of a sudden, DM shows up. Hits the arena. Hits the spear. The swap back. It still actually pins Zhao Wei outside of the spear. Outside of the walls, rather. And <laughs> I like this. He's got the day gone. <laughs> You don't see this as often on the support coddles. Yep, and they need that magic damage burst, especially to be able to kill Nightfall, which they do get him beautifully done. They do have the arena coming out from DM that's going to be able to get the kill on Y, unless Faith Beyond is willing uh... to exchange his life for support. It seems like that is going to be the case, but they can still fight on. Ami's going to be caught inside the Winner's Curse. Doesn't last long, though. No heroes around. He does get pinned to the wall. GPK is here to be able to finish him off, and he's got him. Rolling Thunder on in to be able to clip. Kingslayer catches save on his way out as Xiao Wei is going to roll away, away, away. I'm going to say all of that. Zhao Wei, holding, holding, and the initiation, the hook shot. Followed up, Rolling Thunder, the Winter's Curse is going to be too late. Zhao Wei is already causing some chaos in the back lines as they're going to be able to finish off save pretty easily. From the low ground, Virtus Pro trying to return fire, but now they stuck around perhaps a bit too long. Faith Beyond swapping Nightfall into an awkward position here, keeping him away from the rest of his team. He's going to have to Sunder, using it on Faith Beyond, who still wants to fight the Viper. He won't have TP for another 25, so they're going to start getting aggressive. They throw the ward on the high ground. Faith Beyond looking for the swamp once something out of this, and they're only going to get Kingslayer. He is going to actually throw out the Winner's Curse, but Venge is going to be fine with this. In fact, DM committing into this team fight, but Ami's in the perfect position to burning Garage through the arena and get the kill. Now, the Ignis Foch is pulling in Nightfall, but he turns around, goes for Xiao Wei, turns in, rolls up, tries to do what he can. Shield Crash survives a bit longer, but ultimately, because of the buybacks on Virtus Pro, LGD are going to back away. Because now, you can trade those buys into a potential Aegis, and uh, what do you know, another DD, the most impactful rune so far this series. <laughs> it certainly has, and it's perfectly timed, too, as Meta's about to wear. Oh, he got the kill on save. A pushback spear in from DM. Ame has a BKB, though. He needs actually a center. He doesn't have it. Swap back in. Ame still trying Can't to get save the damage reduction. It's enough to keep him alive. Ultra kill for Ame and a rampage, baby. LGD, you thought they couldn't contest that, Roshan, but now it's diebacks on three members of Virtus Pro. Once again, it's the BKB discipline. He still has it available because in that earlier engagement, he positioned and played in such a way. Like they, they just hit a serious wall where now 12,000 net worth lead on LGD. It doesn't matter if you've got the harder carry on Terror Blade. It doesn't matter if he's got all that armor. When the clinks just hit so hard, he's got Scotty now. Next thing you know, he's going to go Gleipnir, maybe Daedalus after that. Ignis Fatuous, oh, barely off the mark to be able to pull Nightfall to the other side of that Cogs, but Ame, he finds Kingslayer on his way out to try and save his Terror Blade, not knowing that he was the one in danger. GPK does manage to kill Faith Beyond, but it doesn't matter. Remember, that's illusion illusion that swaps you back into death and now positions him into the back line. Stuns up save while Ami delivers the damage to be able to push back the rest of Virtus Pro. He is so far. Oh, and save. He gets spotted by two. LGD is everywhere right now. They used Virtus Pro. They just cannot catch a break as they, yeah, the battery salt's going to be there. Save's not getting out. Don't even try. Don't even try leaving your base. There it is. The march forward. Virtus Pro. 
Without save, they seem a bit skittish to take a fight, but the fight's gonna happy anyway gpk he's gonna be swapped back in faith beyond's in deep why in even deeper underneath the tier fours but they're both able to get out pretty easily as gpk is not going to be able to keep himself alive the cold embrace is not good enough dm throws out the spear and keeps ame out of this fight for now <laughs> but nightfall he's having a hard time finding a target he's got the sunder ready to go as soon as he kills this venge he's going to turn around and sunder his own teammates back to the base back to the fountain but he can't get out he's going to get swapped back in and he doesn't have a sunder this time around this time around he's going to be Bursted. The he Winter's would. Curse was nice, but ultimately, without their carry, how can they hold on here? Save's going to TP in aggressively, see if they can actually kill Ame without the Terror Blade. They see it's a foolish, foolish try as DM swapped out of the Burning Barrage, but it doesn't matter. It's into the Ignis Fatuous as both him and GPK are lured into their deaths by that floating light straight into the clutches of Ame. One lane of barracks down. Two lanes and possibly the GG gonna be forced out of Virtus Pro. Let's pick Venge, maybe not the greatest matchup, but Faith Beyond is just a beast. Like they got Agonims and just won every single fight. They're gonna get a full out Megas before Terror Blade is even back up. Daedalus complete 4,700 HP on Clinks thanks to the uh, 25 talent swap back. Nightfall, Pomps is BKB. Yeah, that's a great point. I gotta say, PSG LGD, you're likely headed to the finals. Make Ame your Soul Clinks player. Um, I like the Gleipnir as an item, but not first. The fourth item feels way stronger and just a near incredible. It's perfect. Cute combo attempted there by the Mars and Winter Wyvern. Cold Embrace Wall Bulwart. Trying to draw the damage away from Ame, but he's going to keep on this damage onto the Ancient to finish out this series. The Force Vertex Pro out of this tournament for ESL 1 Fall. They are going to the Grand Finals. Beautiful stuff from LGD.